this third season, I mean, I'm always impressed with the great because it's just so good. But like, my God, the uh, the heights it goes to, and I think especially Elle Fanning, like especially this year, like um, no, she's fantastic, isn't she? Oh my God! And I just I was so happy that um, the costumes you know got recognized last season, and I was just I think I said this to you last time that it was just like I don't know how the hell you do this. I mean, guys, there's. So I, I did you know afterwards? I'm not sure how we do it. <laughs> you just you probably just watch it like entirely spent. Yeah. Um, did you um, or why so did thank, you do that sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. I am um, okay. I sort of I think I had this problem last time. I was like, where do I start? Um so I guess let's start with Catherine, just because. I, I started writing down costumes that she wears. Like in episode two, she wears this. I think it's in one of the scenes that she has with the ambassador from America and the ambassador for England. It's like pink toned with this like, there's like a, a I don't know what it's called. It's not a fascinator. It's something that's in her hair. It's like, yeah, feathers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love that. Um, and then as the season progresses, you know, it's her emotional arc is so it's devastating and then and then I love how after episode six happens and Peter dies like I love that she is like wearing his clothes I love that um I guess from the get-go in a general sense how did you want to approach Catherine this season um well I I mean she wasn't going to be she was obviously not pregnant anymore and Mm -hmm. uh, the head of the court the queen Mm -hmm. um and this time she's in love rather than sort of battling with it really. So that gave us a, I mean, it was great that she wasn't, you know, no longer pregnant because I didn't, I didn't do costumes for, I only think I got about two or three costumes at the very end of season two where she wasn't pregnant mm, and the pregnancy right. was dictating shapes and, and everything. So it was, that, that was, that was great to be able to start from that point. And because she, would be more powerful um have whether i mean her as a character she's not kind of clothes obsessed or anything it's mm-hmm. just l fanning herself is stunning and yeah, to, she looks gorgeous to, and everything i was gonna say to sort of dress that down would be would, would be farcical i think so mm-hmm. but in in order to kind of give her the idea of in you know more power wealth if you like because she's in a position where nothing it, it doesn't matter what mm. things cost really um she her costume's got more lush and mm. the one that you mentioned the pale pink one I think that's the biggest at that point that we'd gone in terms of the size of the dress and mm. sort of the, the sort of it I mean I wanted it to be something that looked so breathtaking that she could kind of flirt and manipulate the men at the table um mm. And also for everybody else to look quite decadent and she looks sort of radiant. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's why she was in that colour, in that position. So I think you've got quite a lot of rich and dark and very heavily made up people sort of round her. Mm-hmm. And then she should be this kind of glowing beam of light at the end of the table at that point. Mm-hmm. And then as they are, and because the f- scripts are fed in, I don't, always know where things are going to go mm-hmm. far ahead so, <laughs> no, <laughs> so no pressure just it's like <laughs> here's a script we're going to start shooting in two days go for it yeah <laughs> so, so you know we develop I mean buying fabrics the hardest part because sometimes you have to order it and it doesn't come for weeks and mm-hmm. there are points where sort of fabric comes in and it was supposed to be for somebody but their story arc has changed <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Okay, we're gonna uh, <laughs> not waste this wonderful fabric. It's gonna have to move to somebody else. Um, mm. but with with Elle, yeah, I mean, happily, I feel it sort of reached a point in episode six where she's on the ice, where she's with Peter, where she's Peter's, where she's the kind of the closest she's been to Peter mm. in a way. Um, and she's in an animal print, mm-hmm. and. Um, I used Snow Leopard because I really couldn't think that there was another, uh, you know, 
animal print that would be as good to work with him and his All right. so that's why she's in that and then and then the astrakhan i had um I mean, obviously, I did lots of research and references, so I was kind of mixing up. I think you'd probably say that I was mixing up the 18th century with the sort of very early 50s, really, in mm. that sort of shape, keeping her waist really small and all that. Yeah. Uh, so that was the... And then after that, she starts to break break up. So the next two... The script... Um, you know, the next two scripts that came in, it was sort of that... you just like, oh, OK, well, mm-hmm. we'll kind of... We'll... I don't know, sort of, we broke things up, the dress that she wears, four, six, seven. We usually, in all her dresses and all the women's dresses, everything matches. So you have mm. symmetry at all times. So if you've got a flower on one side, you've got a flower on the other side. I mean, it's kind of very a very symmetrical period, the 18th mm. century. Yeah. And what we did in that episode for her was break that all up. So mm. all the patterns... Uh, nothing's symmetrical there's no pattern matching all the edges of her dress are kind of broken and extra and the fabrics are actually softer so that she could do whatever she wanted in them it was they weren't gonna crease damp they weren't gonna damage in any way yeah it was a bit sort of sloppier and heavier that kind of blue blue and dark red so that dress Mm. was and the dark red, the internal dark red, was kind of really important yeah. for her traditional state. And then she moves on to, yeah, Peter's costumes, and it's everything gets dark. Her world gets darker until the end. Yeah. Until the end, yes. Um, I, I'm glad that you said the word glowing in terms of that dress very early on, just because, I mean, she's Elle is a very stunning young lady, but there is something about her in that dress I don't know I can't pinpoint what it is it's just a feeling that I was just like I did think to myself she could probably I'm gay as hell and I'm I she could probably manipulate me so easily <laughs> no it's I don't know it's something about like the the pink or it's, it's like you know it's it's pink it's feminine it's soft but it's it's something about the connection with the piece that that gold thing in her hair I don't know what it is it's something where um, I, I did think when I saw that scene, I was like, oh, wow, she is glowing more so than normal. And then um, I like how the the snow leopard in the shots where, you know, she she lays back in the snow. There's a lot of time where she's like just laying back. Oh, I love I love that. I have to uh, say, I love that shot. Isn't it brilliant? Yeah. And it, it sort of just feels like. In a weird way, I thought I was like, she probably just wants the the, the ground underneath her to swallow her up. Yeah feel like that that really um since it's snow leopard and she's laying in snow that I thought of that yeah and she, and her heart's completely broken mm-hmm. yeah and I, yeah. <clears throat> I wish there was still of that there isn't a still out of that what oh, they really? do those people oh. still out mm. oh yeah that's that's a gorgeous gorgeous shot um I guess we should probably continue with characters just because they're every, I mean, I could talk to you for like three days about every single outfit in the show, but it's, um, um, I wanted to know maybe sort of going in a completely opposite direction. Um, we see, um, a lot of group action with a lot of like peasants and nobles. Yeah. Uh, we get a lot of that this year. Um, how did you sort of want, I don't want to say like, how did you dress the peasants, but sort of, <laughs> I guess just how did you dress the peasants or what was like, you have a lot of variety in there, a lot of headpieces, a lot of. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was quite, uh, we did, I mean, I'd done a lot of research on uh, season two and actually they didn't really come into it. I, I'd expected to see um, the peoples of Russia, if you like. Mm-hmm. Um, and also because they're absolutely fascinating. So every time you sort of come across a book or some point of references we were kind of stashing them away and then tony Hmm. wrote that episode which is three so that would have come in (laughs) we knew that the peasants were going to come in um and or the peoples of russia because they're not all right i should say that yes i'm correct i stand corrected yes yeah because some of them are supposed to be merchants and Mm -hmm. and everything and of course there isn't any there is no russian peasant costumes in england or anywhere really <laughs> and there is no merchant costumes and there is no so so we had to um approach making some of them so we made some pieces we did uh I did a lot of reference about sort of 
I don't I mean the country is so massive the right. types of people in the country were so different so you get so mm. many different faces and everything so it really it was there was I uh, had a couple of really great um design fellow designers who were um, not wanting to work um, every single day of the week in the summer holidays because they've got kids and so they really um, were wonderful and they went to pull stock in the costume houses mm. that we started to acute we were making and accumulating things and then it yeah it all had to be fitted to try to look like uh, Russian people on either Italians in Italy or uh, English people in England it was, I mean, it was quite, a, we got great people um, sending us, you know, boxes of jewellery to go through. And mm -hmm. and it, ha it it is quite hard not to make it look um, like a sort of funny costume mm -hmm. piece of drama. You know, you've got to, you've got to try and make each one a character. I had really good people helping yeah. I I did feel like when I saw you know when she's doing uh when Catherine is doing like you know the speech at the Nakaz and I thought it was you know she's wearing this like gorgeous red like red white and blue dress um and then she's speaking to all these people and I felt like every time the camera hit somebody else I was like who's that person who's that person it just sort of felt like I really I honestly feel like the 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 costuming made me it really piqued my interest I was like I want to know why they wear this. I want to know why they, what they do. Um, you know, are they a farmer? Are they a merchant? I sort of wanted to know more. I feel like it expands the the world of the great, you know, outside of the palace walls in a really unique way since they bring everybody inside. Um, and yeah. everybody all together was really sort of, I was just like, oh God, I want to look at everybody. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, you wouldn't, I mean, it's quite surprising what, um, what people will because that's when people say peasants you just imagine everybody wearing brown and right being dirty and that's mm. just not it, that's just not the case and especially because yeah. they come into the palace um to you know they would have worn their best clothes in mm. but they had i mean yeah there's i mean there's there's quite a lot of the people were still wearing it in sort of 1900 when there was photographs being taken so mm. there is quite a lot of uh photographic reference you know, there wasn't much change basically between sort of 1750 and 1900 in what this traditional shape and costume was. Yeah. So, yeah, lots, lots of, lots of lovely, lovely pictures we were looking at. Hmm. Okay. Um, I have to talk to you about my favorite. Well, the the character whose clothes that I am a, a little surprised that I want all of his clothes is I want all of Maxim's. Yeah. <laughs> I love how Mariel describes him as you foppy little monster. I think that is an amazing line. And I feel like just that line conjures up a lot of the, the color palette with him. Like he wears a lot of really uh, bright blues, a lot of pinks. I feel like for him, especially for a young boy, like nothing is off limits. For no. Him. no. Um, when they pull, when they show his like trunk of like, sparkly almost ruby slippers beautiful shoes I wanted to die because I I remember pausing the tv and I was like oh my god I want all of those shoes um I guess with a character like him because he is young because um you know in this time period we get to see a lot of men wearing a lot more flamboyant things um I guess what's it like to create something that is not off limits for someone who we don't usually see stuff off limits for, if that makes sense. Um, I mean, it's wonderful. I mean, it's really wonderful. And uh, Henry Meredith, who plays Maxim, mm -hmm. is really good. You know, for for a little boy who comes in in his tracksuit and everything, and he, <laughs> and his trainers, and then he kind of and he actually does kind of become Maxim mm -hmm. in the fitting. You know, start yeah. standing differently and everything. He doesn't mind the frilly shirt. He doesn't mind any of it, which which is brilliant because that would have been. I mean, that might have changed things if we got a, a child actor who was really uncomfortable mm. and he just isn't uncomfortable in them. Um, in, it was hilarious when we gave him his first set of heels because we, the first set of shoes this time, because obviously every two episodes he was growing, so he couldn't really go back right. into it. <laughs> so, but um, also I wanted to get him out last 
last season he was you know a child and he was wearing flat shoes but this season as he was a you know growing up he's like 12 mm -hmm. um, I thought we could get him into a heel but that was hilarious because that's the one thing that he just was he'd never worn a heel before <laughs> he was walking around the fitting room you know sort of at a really strange angle going I don't know whether I can wear these and he also had to at one point go back into his pink suit which he'd worn in season two. Mm -hmm. All we could do, we didn't have time to make him a whole new costume. So he had to go into back into the waistcoat and jacket and it was so tight. And then we had to make him another pair of trousers because we couldn't get him in the trousers. He would, they absolutely wouldn't fit. <laughs> Poor love, he was sort of, he was sort of, you know, moving around like this. Like, yeah. And it's really tight. I don't think I can ever wear this again. I was like, then no need to. But no, he was, he's, oh a good character and also he doesn't take much fabric so there's a couple of his waistcoats where he found the most delightful little bit of fabric and it's, it's just enough to do um him a waistcoat but of course everybody else is too big so oh my gosh I didn't even think that you know when you're a a, a kid of that age you grow like from day to day I yeah knew I didn't even think about that so like oh that poses a completely other challenge for you folks yeah no he because he has I, I, I really wanted him to have because he is so foppish I wanted mm -hmm. him to have um his indoor wear um which we tried to explain to him was like wearing sweatpants but he's, he never did quite understand <laughs> what he was doing. so he has kind of slippers and he has a matching waistcoat and like dressing gown which is mm -hmm called a banyan then and it's what men used to wear and a sort of cravat at one point mm -hmm. so um I wanted to have one of those and we made one and then yeah we had to make another one for later in the in the in the episodes because he'd grown too much he didn't wow. even fit the banyan but he's he's supposed to as well be always compl well he was designed to always be complementary to um Mario yeah you know, it's maybe even he, I don't know, is he just getting her dresses made when he gets his suit made? It's sort like my of... wife will look good in this. That's yeah, it. yeah. Yeah, the yeah. scene where they, um, I think it's early in the season where they go, they try to go to the party and they get rejected at the door and yeah. like storms off. They're wear, I think they're both wearing pink. In, yeah. And that, and I was just, I remember seeing them on the screen together and I was like, oh, it's so good. Because it's like. It's so ridiculous. He's like a twelve-year-old boy, and she's this like foul-mouthed, like. Really <laughs> <laughs> Anytime they're on screen together, I could not stop laughing. I mean, no matter what the scene was, something violent or horrible could have been happening. But I know, and I love the jewel. Didn't eat the jewel when he's <laughs> I don't. It's sort of like I was so surprised and taken aback that every single time that I was like, I want this twelve-year-old clothes because they're. They're all so good, and I think I'm getting to an age where I'm just like, I don't care what people think. I want to wear. <laughs> you can wear a tricorn. I can wear, yeah. Just like I want to. I love that he wore that, and like everywhere. Um, yeah. And it was just, I don't know. I think, uh, I think a lot of people, especially men, could take a little page out of Maxim's audacity to wear yeah. bright, beautiful things. Um, I want to ask about Baby Paul, just because. You don't want to wear his clothes, do you? No, I do not. No, um, <laughs> maybe on Halloween, but um, just that uh, that green like thing with the teeth on it. I love that. I, I <laughs> I'm sort of tickled at the idea of the the idea of Catherine and Peter, I guess, like deciding what their child would wear, and Peter who has this. Uh, you know, very childlike quality to him, very exciting. Um, and and uh, Catherine wants to raise him right and, you know, make him the leader that she thinks he deserves to be. Um, I guess I wanted to know for a baby, since we don't have a lot of other babies on the set of The Great, I guess, like, <laughs> you want to really, how did you want to present baby Paul? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I would have liked to have made more for baby Paul, but it's, it is quite, um, it is quite, quite difficult difficult we have to make uh for the twins who are the babies mm -hmm. and then there's also uh a a, a, a a a not a stunt baby but a prop baby so you're making three of everything <laughs> each time <laughs> um so that kind of says the process down and like um and they're also growing 
So yeah. there's a kind of, you know, like in 10, you know, in the 10 months that we're shooting there. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's slightly different from one. So it, they, Baby Paul doesn't have as much as I would like, mm -hmm. like to have. But I did, I mean, I just, I really wanted to sort of, uh, the clothes at the time, when you look at them, they're, they're, they're fabulous, but they're not very practical for us on screen because Baby Paul gets picked up all the time and moved around all the time. Mm -hmm. Really, he would have been in a dress. Mm -hmm. But there were too many things where where his legs, for instance, when he's on the reindeer or the deer, reindeer, um, <laughs> yeah, his leg is in a harness and his legs have to dangle either side. And um, he was a girl, by the way. <laughs> they were girls because <laughs> they what? were really. <laughs> Which took quite a long time. We were making for them, and I. And then every time the pictures, the baby, the mum with the babies, came through with them in the costume, I was mm -hmm. like, "I'm sure, I'm sure that baby's a girl." Anyway, they were <laughs> girls. But um, so I just thought knit these knitted two pieces because I, I, we all know that you know that knitting has never not existed. It's always right. existed. It's just that samples don't get you know they they fall apart and get eaten by moth and so there isn't lots and lots of um reference for this particular period but yeah I just went I just decided to get knitting done to make him a knitted two-piece and they um weren't but he has the childish ones which is the ducks and rabbits mm -hmm. I mean I have to say that in the costume department baby Paul was a figure of fun <laughs> in a way because we just kept going oh that'd be great that'd be great if we did mm -hmm. that we did at one point we did um snake print uh leggings you know like oh. all in but it just didn't work actually it, it didn't work on a baby to make him like Paul so Peter mm -hmm. so uh, I we had done these things the only thing that worked in Peter's sort of world that has nothing is the kind of um bear hat and I think that is both Peter and baby Paul Oh, but yeah. When, well, yeah, when we tried the animal prints on a baby, it just didn't look, it just didn't look right. So instead we went okay. for the Antarsia knitting and two, he's got, there's two suits. There's the gold and the green mm -hmm. for best. And there's the duck, <laughs> the duck and the rabbit uh, for daytime. Mm -hmm. And then there's a little jacket and nighties and things like that. I think it'd be so funny, just the idea of like- Oh, and there's the, the squirrel coat as well. Oh my God, the squirrel coat, yes. <laughs> I, I just I get sort of uh it makes me laugh just thinking of them demanding like make something make something adorable for my child the future <laughs> yeah. it has to be cute it has to be whimsical <laughs> and animal like I love that um I guess just one last question before I let you go is uh I was really emotionally responsive to the final scene where uh Elle as Catherine comes in her hair is cut short uh, she is acknowledging her own grief with that it, uh, it black or dark navy blue dress. Um, Both. It's black okay. and it goes okay. through. It it sort of goes through uh, navy blue and then back black and navy blue. It's like a it's like an enormous stripe. Mm, okay, I I love that. I think it's I love the shape of it. I like how wide it is. Yeah, it's really wide. It's the widest. It's the widest dress that she's worn actually. Wow. It reminded me of like Mariel has a lot of dresses where like she has to like run with her arms like in front of her almost. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, yeah I think I, I, idiot I, complained about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess just uh, with that final look and, you know, we're ending the season with a character who is, doesn't know what the future holds for her, I guess. Um, what was that like? Just because I was really taken with that whole um, thing. The, 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 haircut was written in uh, scripted okay. so, and we'd already discussed her going into um, Peter's clothing or and then sort of slightly coming out of Peter's clothing which is um I think it's episode 10 at the beginning where she's got, she's got kind of female bodices on again rather mm -hmm. than his shirt and she's got um skirts that aren't quite as mad as you know they're kind of starting to settle down a bit the, it was really quite difficult to think what to do because knowing that she, I, the, there was wig tests, so I went and had a look at her hair, and I'd always had an idea that she would go into black. Uh, Tony really didn't want her in black, mm, um, okay. so we uh, tried her in something that was dark blue because really 
I've done some mood boards for black and I've done some mood boards for red and I've done some mood boards for, you know, we were trying sort of really strong. It had to be a strong statement because it's mm-hmm. like it's cleansing and she's emotionally, you know, she's come full circle and she's come out and this is, it, it's like the madness of grief and this is the more sort of, you know, cathartic bit of grief. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it, it just went through different sort of stages. And in the end, I think we we agreed that a dark, really dark colour would be fantastic. And I really felt that she should have long sleeves because she's in mourning, really. Mm. She's grieving still. Uh, I thought we should give her as much white skin as we could to make the hair look, you know, fab and, and yeah. that sort of cleansing thing. And it was just then finding a fabric. And I and I actually found that in London. Um mm searching around and I just thought that that would answer it was re- you know a bit naughty because it had been the black that I wanted and definitely the blue that <laughs> that, <laughs> that Tony and Marion wanted so that we got it all in one um, wow. and then we made the skirt much bigger and we put um, things that made it bounce and you know the underpinnings aren't so- solid they're kind of frothy so mm. that as she moves um, oh, it yeah. lifts up Oh no, it's a fantastic scene. You should have seen. Oh it. yeah, they, we were we were like we were our jaws were on the ground. Yeah, I had the pleasure of speaking to Elle yesterday, and she was talking about the freedom that she had in that scene, and how she was able to pick the song. And it was I don't know. It's it's I feel like I've never for a character that I've loved seeing for three straight seasons, I've never seen her look like that. Like not just the hair, but it's also. I, I, you know, she is a very optimistic character and she wears a lot of bright colors and she wants to, um, I don't know, it's sort of just seeing her like that. I feel like I was looking at the character in a completely different way. Um, yeah, it's more kind of internal, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she doesn't say anything. And I love how the episode ends with there's no music on the credits. So we sort of get to linger with this image of Elle Fanning bouncing and thrashing around in this this huge dark color dress I love it um no it, it, it really was amazing in there at, on, you know on the I mean I can't remember how many takes we did too many I think for her because <laughs> you got <laughs> it's really you know it was a big dress really but yeah. um it was it, each one was just better and better mm. fantastic well thank you Sharon so much I didn't I'm sorry I didn't realize you were talking for so long um uh, I just oh, love... well, don't worry but yeah That's I, I I love the costuming of the show. I just felt like the, you know, every single time a character entered, I would, <laughs> my jaw hit the floor. Um, so thank you so much for your time uh, rooting for you this season. And uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good rest of your day. Yeah. You, you Bye. Bye. Bye.